Governor Dave Umahi joins us now from Abakaliki, the capital of uh, Ebony State. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. It's good to see you again. I know it's been a very busy day for you after all those activities we watched live on TV. But let's begin the conversation tonight about um, some of the uh, internal workings of the APC. It's a new party that you are heading in uh, in a boy say since you moved from the PDP to the APC. And I want to ask first and foremost, this is your first task of setting up a structure for your party in a boy said, I mean the APC now, you've done it in the PDP as a, a governor uh, in the second term. But how easy is that? Because I understand that one of your uh, very close ally just left the, your party. But how easy it is, uh, is it for you to be setting up a brand new party structure in your state. Um, thank you, Shell. Uh, good evening, viewers. Um, I must say that um, uh, God made it easier than I thought. And I think that uh, one of the uh, main uh, factors beside the grace of God, is the fact that uh, I put my hands open, uh, being the leader of the party in the state, uh, does not mean that during election I will lead in all the words and pulling units. So uh, I, I made sure that I allow the stakeholders in all the words to decide what happens in their words. And that has made it very, very easy for me to have a very united APC in the Boeing states. Uh, your commissioner for uh, internal security, I understand, and border peace uh, had resigned. But we are hearing that he might uh, be the next chairman of the APC in the state. Is that a plan? Uh, if he's elected. He has to be elected to become the chairman of uh, the APC. He has to be elected. <laughs> but, I mean, are, are you looking in that direction? Does he have your prayers uh, to do that? Because I understand there was a validatory session for him. And as soon as he left, I mean, he was wished well. And But what we are hearing on the ground in Ebony is that he might be uh, doing that. Is that what, did he have any conversation in that respect with you? Uh, leadership is about keeping your uh, secret secret, Shane. Um, if it did, I'm not going to be disclosing it. But you saw what happened today. It's a very transparent process in Ebony instead. So even if uh, he has that wish, he has to be, uh, that wish has to be subjected to the will of the people. So if that happens, Shane will be there and he will know. All right, it will be interesting to, to see what happens. But the, but the PDP in a bond state have been talking about, I mean, considering the fact that some of your friends whom you left in the PDP, uh, they've, they, are, they still remained, and the former governor, uh, some uh, lawmakers are still staying back in the PDP, and they're saying the PDP is still very strong. And they're already uh, drumming that uh, sound that, Come the next election cycle, the APC doesn't have a stronghold in, um, in a Bonny state. Uh, are, you a, are you worried about this kind of um, tendencies when uh, you left the PDP for the APC and uh, the fear that when you're going into the next election, the chances of your new, new party at the next elections? Um, Shil, thank you very much. Um, you know, talk is very cheap. Ask uh, those people that still remain in uh, PDP to stage one rally. I'm not talking about war rally, I'm talking about state rally, so that they can show you the number they have if they want to make noise. Talk is very cheap. Even one of the senators could not win his uh, polling unit uh, during his own election in a point state. So, um, but in my character, my upbringing, I don't like to talk about people. They have their problems. 
and I don't remember them. So, you you were part of, I mean, you are part of uh, the campaign organization for the APC that was set up for the Anambra governorship election. Um, already, we saw about six lawmakers from Anambra State who dumped the, uh, the All Progressive Grand Alliance for the APC. And Senator Stella Odua also dumped the PDP for the APC. Give us a sense of the strategy of the APC in Anambra State, of which you are a part of that campaign organization. Is it a strategy includes you emptying other party to gain support for your party? Uh, Shigo, I don't understand what you mean by empty other parties. You know, uh, Anambra people are members of these parties. And so, uh, incidentally, I'm the uh, subcommittee chairman on strategy and the deputy chairman on uh, uh, Anambra election. Uh, the strategy is to uh, sell our party, the APC, to Anambra people and uh, let them see what uh, Mr. President has done for Anambra people, has done for uh, Southeast, and they sell our candidates, you know, uh, Senator Anduba, to Anambra people. And if it means collapsing other parties uh, to uh, fuse into uh, uh, our own party, APC, uh, that's a very good strategy. But the important thing is that whoever is from Anambra state and belongs to any party or doesn't belong to any party, it's our target, you know, to sell our party and sell our candidates, you know, to them. It will be interesting to see how this plays out, uh, knowing for well that um, the ruling party in uh, Anambra State is the All Progressives Grand Alliance. And historically, if you look at what is, uh, what Afghan means uh, to people of Anambra State and, in fact, the Southeast people, uh, let me get your view first and foremost. APGA, Anambra State. Um, what is your thought about that party and governorship election in that state? Uh, they've shown capacity in winning elections. Is this a major worry for your party? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Don't forget that in the last uh, governorship election, um, that uh, uh, APC came second, and uh, it was not a distant second. And uh, uh, this time around, we, we intend to work, you know, very hard uh, to ensure victory for APC. Before uh, this time, APC was, uh, you know, in existence only in Imo State. But today, uh, we have Imo State. Uh, we have uh, a Bonny State. And we are still counting by the uh, quality and the caliber, you know, and the content of uh, the uh, 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 people from Southeast that are in APC. Uh, don't forget that also Senator Joy Modi, you know, a beauty member of, uh, you know, a troubled uh, PDP, has also uh, joined the uh, APC in Anambra State. So uh, we're very hopeful that with the quality of uh, the personalities in Anambra State, that are joining uh, uh, APC uh, because of uh, the commitment of APC in Southeast, and of course also because of uh, the person, you know, uh, of uh, Senator Andrew, by a man that is a, a very calm person and very unassuming and very humble person. So I think that these factors will help us to say our party uh, from second position and Ambra State to first position. What would you be telling the people of Anambra State about the APC, uh, a party that they've not uh, allowed to, uh, to govern the state uh, at the governorship level? What would you be telling them about your party uh, this time around when you go for the campaigns? Um, incidentally, uh, Senator Andoba has uh, uh, told, uh, you know, his uh, manifesto when he was campaigning, uh, you know, as one of the aspirants. He said, look, I'm going to make uh, Anambra State to look like a Boeing State. And that was even when I was in PDP. And so I'm very happy for that. 
uh, which means that irrespective of party affiliation, he has eyes, you know, for, you know, development. He has eyes, you know, for uh, what would be good for Anambra people. So I'll be telling them, look, uh, from the one, uh, our founding fathers, you know, our leaders in Southeast, we've always played at the center. We've always belonged to the ruling party at the center. And that it pays us as Southeast people to belong to the ruling party, to belong to the center. So by asking them that we have a lot to benefit by belonging to the center as we have done in the past. And so the light that our founding fathers and our forefathers gave to us, you know, in the committee of the nation Nigeria, should not die in our hand. So I would like to let them know that we have to unite behind a peace in Southeast and that we are bound to get more. So, I mean, in terms of those are some kind of, uh, it's going to be a political conversation and it does look like uh, one that you have picked up right now. But in practical terms, what would you say that the APC stands for in, uh, in a number of states in terms of the deliverables? Uh, because they will be asking those questions. What has your party done for us? What should we be expecting? But first and foremost, people want to see what have you given us, first and foremost? And what would you be telling them that the APC is offering or has offered to the people of Anambra State and the Southeast? Um, without, um, you know, having total knowledge of uh, the commitment of federal government in Anambra State, but I know of, uh, for sure, of a number of federal rules that are ongoing in Anambra State. I know of almost the biggest project you know, of Mr. President in the entire country, you know, the Second Niger Bridge. Before now, it was a political statement by previous administration. Only Mr. President has made it to be a reality and is committed to completing it, you know, uh, before the, uh, the uh, its exit date. I'm so excited about that project because it's going to open up Southeast, you know, quite uh, a lot. Uh, I also know of uh, the dredging of, uh, you know, uh, the... Uh, the, um, the port there, uh, and so many other, you know, uh, incentives, including all the appointments, you know, that Mr. President has given to uh, the people of Anambra State. And the, coming back to uh, use a boy state to set example of uh, the, what, you know, Southeast is bound to benefit. You recall that um, even when I was in PDP, I refused to castigate Mr. President because I say it's not the culture of my family, it's not the culture of, uh, you know, an Igbo man. You don't uh, castigate, you know, your leader, uh, you pray for your leader. And uh, uh, I've been quite close to Mr. President even when I was in the other party. And uh, by that reason, uh, Mr. President has, you know, uh, favored, you know, uh, Southeast tremendously. Even though uh, Mr. President is a man of uh, equity, because whatever he did for me as governor <coughs> of the state uh, before and now, he has also done for every other governor. But specifically, uh, there is no uh, uh, agenda we have taken to Mr. President on behalf of Saudi that has not listened to us. So I'll be telling uh, them that it come closer to Mr. President and see that he's a man of fairness. He's a man of honesty, and if he makes a promise to you, he will keep it. And I can say that uh, under Mr. President, Ebony State is one of the fastest growing states. And uh, I have a lot to tell about the uh, assistance of Mr. President, uh, not only to Ebony State, but the entire you know, uh, other states of uh, the Federation. And I'm very proud to belong to APC, very proud to be playing at the center. And um, I can tell you that Ebony has developed under APC government. Let's take a breather, Governor. But when we come back, there, there's a lot more to talk about on the Southeast politics, the APC. In fact, we will be touching on the 2023 politics, how things are shaping up, the internal affairs of the APC at the center, and the views of Governor Dave Humai. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Uh, Governor, if you can hear me now, I, I was making reference to 
the internal workings and some of the disagreements that we've seen play out in, for example, in Anambra APC. Uh, I'm aware that a, a minister is not agreeing with the candidate of the party that emerged. In fact, the process is not even in agreement with it. But you had a, a stakeholders meeting of leaders of the party in Enugu where you were talking to them of the need to join forces and to align in moving the party forward. But if you are going into an election, for example, in Anambra State, how much of that reconciliation have you been able to achieve? Thank you very much, Shingo. Um, I'm aware that uh, the, um, the primary election, you know, for APC, uh, Uber, uh, candidate selection was not uh, uh, agreeable to all the aspirants that contested. I'm aware of that. Uh, some of them complained to me. Some of them complained to uh, Senator uh, His Excellency Hope of Imo State, and of course, um, you know, Senator uh, Ken Namani. And I'm also aware that uh, they have taken their complaints to uh, the national uh, leadership of the party. Uh, a reconciliation committee uh, was set up and they have been mediating on the matter. And of course, there was also, um, you know, a peer committee that was set up. So all these things put together, uh, you know, give uh, uh, Mr. President, the leader of the party, you know, more information than each and every one of us. And uh, having considered all the uh, complaints and uh, all the reconciliation efforts and uh, the report of the Congress, uh, uh, the appeal committee, uh, I think in the wisdom of Mr. President, he has appealed that uh, we allow the person declared to be the winner to be the candidate of the party. And I think in a disciplined uh, environment. The moment the national leader and Mr. President has, uh, you know, uh, taken a position and appealed to others, uh, uh, because in our father house there are many mansions. So if this one doesn't work, another one work for all the people that contested. So I think that everyone who is a member of APC, especially in Anambra State, should, you know, uh, queue behind the candidates of Senator Anduba, and this is uh, very important. Uh, for uh, the discipline of the party. At that meeting in Enungu, um, some, I, I, I didn't, in the picture that I saw, except if I am not able to capture, uh, I mean, all the people that are supposed to be there, but if that was a stakeholders meeting, I was expecting that, for example, the senator or uh, the, the minister from Anambra State was going to be there. Was there any reason that it was not there or perhaps is still aggrieved about the situation of things. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, uh, I, I, I wasn't, uh, you know, in a position to know why uh, he wasn't there. But many of the ministers were not there because uh, they were, uh, you know, in one national assignment or other. For example, my... Uh, own minister, uh, minister of uh, uh, science and technology, uh, was in Kano State. But one minister uh, represented all of them, and that's the minister of state for uh, solid mineral, uh, uh, Chief uh, Uche. Uh, you know that he represented all of them and took permission for all of them. So I don't think that uh, the minister of labour will alter or be against the position that Mr. President, uh, you know, has taken. And after all, it's a quite close ally of Mr. President. The candidate of your party in Anambra State, what can you tell for the people of Anambra State who are watching now, either home at home in Anambra State or away from Anambra State, or those of them who are even in diaspora, what can you tell them about the candidate that you have put forward? How sellable? is that man for the job of the governor of an Amber state? Thank you. Um, I think one of the key qualities of a good leader is, uh, you know, uh, ability to uh, be assessed. 
And I think that uh, he has called, you know, uh, first in this regard. Uh, uh, I think Senator Oba, uh, Andy Oba is a very humble person. I think he's approachable, and I think he takes advice. One of the reasons why we fail as leaders is when we think that we know it all and we can do it all, you know, by ourselves. So, but I think that this is one man that is very humble. This man is approachable. This man is resourceful. This man already has an agenda for his people. And so I'll be telling Anambapi to look at these qualities, you know, uh, because I always say that it doesn't matter the amount of EFCC and ICPC and the whatever the laws, you know, it takes a man with the uh, fear of God. It takes a man that has love for his people to really uh, work for, you know, his people. Uh, because, um, you know, you have uh, every reason to either work for your people or not to work for your people. But I think this particular man, because of his uh, level of uh, character and content, I'm sh quite sure that he's going to work for Anambra people. So, I mean, if you look at the kind of candidates that are up in this election, uh, what are the chances of your party uh, as well as the candidate? The, I find it difficult to talk about uh, people, but I will talk about my own candidate and I'll talk about my party, APC. And uh, I will say that APC has made quite, you know, a very good inroad in Southeast and that APC is growing uh, uh, in lengths and bounds. And I'm very sure that APC is going to take an umbrella state uh, without prejudice to uh, the fact that I have a very good friend who is the uh, governor of uh, an umbrella state. But, you know, um, he is uh, exiting, and uh, uh, there's nothing wrong in my saying that, uh, look, uh, my party, you know, uh, is preferred in Anambra State because of the uh, character of uh, the person I know. I can't run down any other candidate in Anambra State. Not in my character, I can't do that. Other candidates are also my friends, and, um, you know, they're good in their own right. But my own is the best, and my party is the best. So uh, I'll come back to the politics of the Southeast. But is the, let me ask specifically in Abonyi State, uh, is the local government Congress in the APC holding tomorrow as scheduled or as planned? Yes. We just concluded today with all the stakeholders. Uh, and we did everything in a very transparent process. We allowed uh, the stakeholders and then the grassroots people to choose uh, who will uh, be uh, their leaders at that level. And uh, it's concluded and it's going to hold. Nothing is stopping it. The national leadership has given us the go ahead to hold it. The Congress committee from the national level, they are already in a uh, point state. They addressed uh, the meeting today. And so we are good to go. I'm saying in uh, some state, Delta, some members of the party have gone to court in Delta, in Ogun State. In fact, there were inauguration of uh, different, two camps are uh, inaugurating different um, uh, chairmen from their own camps. Uh, that's a very big division if you, if you look at the, the way things are going. But are you worried because of, uh, if you look back at the Supreme Court judgment that a lot of people make mention and, and talk about, which is still generating, the PDP had gone to court. Some members of the party also, they've gone to court to, to test and challenge uh, the, the, law, uh, the outcome of that uh, uh, judgment on the, the veracity and the uh, authenticity of the Boonin-led uh, leadership of the APC. Do you have any doubt or any fear at whatsoever about some of the ongoings, these legal issues that are coming up here, here and there, especially with the exercise of tomorrow? Yeah, um, Chegu, there is no fear at all. Recall that uh, you heard me on this uh, channel uh, over this same issue, even before the uh, Supreme Court in their... Uh, wisdom made a pronouncement on that. And uh, incidentally, some of the reasons I advanced were also reasons advanced by the uh, Supreme Court 
uh, coincidentally, because uh, I had said that, you know, about three sections of the, um, the uh, APC constitution, you know, has empowered the, uh, the uh, NEC to appoint, uh, you know, caretaker committee or committees for that matter. And the, in particular, the one section of it that says that, you know, the uh, 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 way a vacancy exists in any organ, you know, at any level of the party, that the NEC is empowered to appoint, you know, committee, you know, to perform such functions. And uh, it doesn't make the functions of that committee an executive uh, 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 committee. And if you recall that in the... Um, in the, in the judgment of the Supreme Court, they also said that, look, the, the Electoral Act has not defined, you know, who is the person that must submit the names of candidates and so on and so forth. So I don't see any sense in that. And I use the, the, uh, uh, my uh, executive council as an example, or the federal executive council. The uh, ESCO in each state, in their wisdom, once in a while could appoint what is called an ESCO committee to perform certain functions that must also be in one ministry or the other. It has not made that particular chairman of that committee to be the chief executive of that ministry upon which that function is performed from. So this is just, you know, uh, people going to court is an exercise in fertility. And I wonder why uh, PDP will go to court when they are defiling their own constitution. It is so strange that a member of a party should wake up and say that they suspend their national chairman. The constitution of their own party, you know, in PDP, has said that no member of the National Executive Committee of the PDP shall be disciplined other than the National Executive Committee. So in their own case, they are messing up their own constitution, and then they have the gut to now start going to join us in that for a matter that Supreme Court has already given judgment upon. So I think it's a waste of... Uh, their own time and resources. I think they are gambling and they believe in that they can, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, influence uh, the court to rule against the ruling of the highest court here in, in the land. So I don't see any uh, benefit of those going to court. And I think that what we are doing is quite in order and it will stand and it will hold. There are a lot of... Uh people who are aggrieved about the word congresses and, you know, the, the, the structure of the party, is, uh, they are in layers from the world to the state, from the state uh, to the region and the region to the national level before you then talk about the national convention. But if we have this uh, array of um, uh, appeals coming from the world congress, you can imagine what may come out, uh, out of... Uh, uh, the local government congresses, and in fact the state. I mean, is this, un is this usual or is it unusual the kind of grievances that people have uh, uh, held con uh, con uh, on the world congresses that was held? I, uh, sure, I quite disagree with you. Uh, uh, I disagree with your uh, position in this because um, uh, when the, uh, they called out uh, those that uh, had petitions in the, the national uh, level of APC uh, in trying to set up the appeal, I think there were just about six states. Uh, six over 36 uh, plus Abuja. I don't know what percentage is going to be given to you, uh, but I think that uh, like in a, that there was also appeal in one word in my own uh, uh, state, and uh, the person that wrote the petition says that they should carry the World uh, Congress to Enugu State uh, to observe. That, for me, is no petition. But in the eyes of uh, the public, there was a petition because the law does not allow you to carry the World Congress beyond the world uh, you know, uh, 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 location. And uh, uh, it NEC, as required by the Electoral Act, had demanded for the venues of uh, all the congresses which were submitted to them, 21 working this side of the congresses. So um, these are the kind of uh, funny, funny petitions. You see, in the black Africa, it's very difficult in most cases for people to admit, you know, that, um, you know, uh, that, that they have not made it. 
And so they will continue to try and continue to try. So I think I give uh, the uh, National Kitika leadership, you know, 99.9% uh, pass uh, uh, excellent mark, you know, in the conduct of the uh, World uh, Congress. But let me tell you that um, the World Congress is the end of the matter uh, because it is from the world that you now have to elect the local government. So I'm from the, the same what people come to elect at the state level. And then uh, the people elected at state level, some of them are also going to the national. So uh, the moment you get the word right, the rest will also be right. And so if one word is wrong from the uh, World Congress, then it will continue to report. But it doesn't constitute anything like, uh, you know, 2% of uh, the entire process. So I think that uh, there is no problem going forward. Let me take you to uh, a na national politics now. Um, and I know one of your worries uh, for leaving the PDP is the consideration that the region, uh, the Southeast, where you represent in the national politics, is not properly catered for in the People's Democratic Party. That, in the least, was uh, the summary of what we uh, could get out of uh, your grievance from uh, leaving the PDP. But as it sees right now, a lot of people will say maybe the Southeast leaders could come together and determine whether or not they can have a unified uh, position on uh, the so-called Igbo presidency for 2023. First and foremost, let me get your view. I've, I've had this conversation with you. Uh, is it, are there positives for the Southeast region for the 2023 presidency, and there are hopes that we might have an Igbo man or, uh, or a candidate from the Southeast emerge as a president of Nigeria in 2023. Thank you, uh, First of all, Shing, I thought that you would have uh, taken on, on the leadership of uh, PVP. Uh, who called me names uh, when I left PDP on the ground of injustice. Uh, uh, right now, the discussion going on in PDP does not suggest that the reasons upon which they called me names uh, uh, will not take place in PDP. I don't see them uh, conceding uh, the presidency to Southeast. Uh, irrespective of the support, past support of Southeast people to PDP. And that's why Southeast people are waking up and are getting wiser and say, look, if we have followed you for these years, and uh, in every consideration, we are not good, we are just good to be following you, then uh, that is not good enough. Uh, don't forget that uh, uh, the late uh, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, uh, His Excellency Alex Ekwem, was the founding chairman of... Uh, uh, the PDP, and uh, by right, and uh, to honor him, they should have been able to, you know, concede the presidency to them. If they're afraid of Southeast winning the presidency in Southeast, have other people that uh, they consider, it, is any, has everybody that, you know, flew the flag of uh, PDP won the presidency? So when you treat everybody on the platform of, uh, you know, uh, equality, then it makes everybody to feel happy. Uh, I am very hopeful that um, the issue of uh, the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is beyond uh, the wisdom of man, uh, is beyond uh, um, you know, the decision of uh, man, uh, but God is the person who has power and might. He owns our lives and he will take that decision. But I know he will take it you know, through our leader, you know, His Excellency Mr. President, is going to impute in his heart, you know, the right decision that will help this nation. That's what I think. Governor Umahi, if a Southeasterner or an Igbo man does not emerge as a candidate of the APC for 2023, what would you do? Shame if it were you, if it were me, what will you do? 
And because I'm not a politician, I may not be able to answer. And because I'm the one asking the question, you are our guest on the program. And the reason why I'm asking this is because you love the PDP because you think they could not cater for the yearnings of the Igbo man in the PDP as concerned 2023. And that's why I wanted to know what would be your reaction or what would you do if uh, a candidate other than a South Easterner emerge uh, or emerges uh, for the APC in 2023? The heartbeat of the people of South East is that they should uh, be given a chance, whether in PDP or APC, uh, for uh, the presidency of uh, this country for reason of equity, fairness, and justice. Uh, I uh, took that position in PDP. And one of the reasons I took that position is because the Southeast, you know, uh, people have supported PDP, you know, all the way. And they have never been given any opportunity to do that. If I follow APC for this length of time, and they don't give Southeast, you know, uh, you know, you know, an opportunity, I will feel bad. I will feel bad. But what I will do, if I stay this length of time, like I stayed in PDP, and that happens, I wouldn't be able to tell you. It depends on what God states me in my mind. But I think strongly that the, uh, uh, the future of this country is in the hand of God. And what pleases God, he will do. Remember when I joined APC, I did not join APC because uh, I needed to insist that Southeast must be the next president. I never did. I joined APC uh, with all my heart and in support of Mr. President and in appreciation of all his support, even when I was in the other party, and also to prove that the Igbo man believes so much in one Nigeria. That is the reason why I joined uh, uh, APC, apart from my protest of the injustice meted to uh, 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 Southeast in PDP. On the final note, and perhaps in 30 seconds, Governor, because we are totally out of time, did you see, did you foresee what is happening in the PDP, the leadership crisis? Did you see it coming? Yes. Yes, um, you know, the, um, I'm, uh, I would say I'm happy with what is happening to uh, the chairman, Secondus, because um, he was a bit naive. When I, in PDP, I had uh, um, a revelation from God, and uh, I prophesied that uh, Obasiki was going to win. He was in APC, I was in PDP. Uh, a governor of PDP instigated Secundus to set up a disciplinary committee against a sitting governor. And I, and I was very, very upset about that. But in humility, I submitted myself to that uh, uh, committee. But I know that a particular governor, who is the owner of PDP, did that, you know, and Secundus had to, you know, succumb to that. And that divided their working committee. Uh, uh, uh. So when I was leaving, I told them, look, do two things. I was told that the working committee, especially second, was going to be unduly removed to give one man or two, you know, the uh, leverage of owning the PDP. I said, that should not happen. And I told second, and I told all the working committee when they visited me in Abuja. And the second one was the right. issue of uh, seat presidency to Southeast, and then we all be together. But they did not. But I think it's the will of God to be where I am. And I'm very happy where I am. And uh, I have seen justice, I have seen equity, and nobody said master in this place. Governor Dave Umaye, Executive Governor of Ebon, he said, it's always a pleasure having these conversations with you. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And that's how we close the program tonight, yeah, everyone. Thank many thanks much. for watching. I'm Sean Wakimale. Bye-bye.